Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. We've got a second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. You can head there and enjoy our weekly vlogs. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse, and we've got some amazing conversations which you guys can head there and just check out. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube and Podbean as well. We've got a Patreon account where you guys can feel free to become members and we'll be very, very appreciative. A thank you to the people that have subscribed and yet to subscribe. A big shout out and thank you to people that comment, uh, like, share our stuff. We're very, very grateful. So today, as you can tell from the title, I'll be reacting to four stories that tell us who Prophet Muhammad really was emotional video. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. so distant from the idea of empathy let alone the practice of it mm -hmm. that we don't sometimes even know what the word means mm -hmm. we know it sounds something kind of like sympathy sympathy is to understand where somebody else is coming from to acknowledge somebody else's pain empathy is to feel their pain to feel their pain the Prophet ﷺ exhibited this beautiful, unbelievable quality of empathy. And I want to share very quick, rapid fire, so try to stay with me. I just want to share a couple of examples of this empathy in regards to different people. How he would practice his empathy with different people. It didn't matter who it was. When Ikrimah, the son of Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl was the man who had declared war against the Prophet ﷺ, the Muslims and Islam. He had killed Muslims just for believing. He had tortured Muslims just for believing. And he was at the head of multiple plots to assassinate the Prophet ﷺ. He eventually led an army into the battlefield with the intent of killing the Prophet ﷺ and as many Muslims as possible. This man made it very clear what his position was in regards to the Prophet ﷺ and Islam. And eventually died with those same convictions. His son who had fought by the side of his father and in fact continued his father's work after his father's death. He is now coming to Mecca to meet the Prophet ﷺ after the conquest of Mecca. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he receives the news that Ikrimah is, has entered Mecca and he's on his way to see you, the Prophet ﷺ turns to his companions and he says, his father's name was Amr bin Hisham and they used to call him Abu al-Hakam because he was a leader of his people. But the Muslims used to call him Abu Jahl because of his actions and his conduct. The Prophet ﷺ turns, he turns to the Muslims, the believers, and he says, Ikrima is coming. And I am hopeful that he will embrace and accept Islam. In his presence, none of you should refer to his father as Abu Jahl because it would hurt his feelings. Even if he becomes a Muslim and he recognizes that his father was wrong in his beliefs and his ideas, and in what he did, it is still his father and it would hurt his feelings to hear people, his new brothers and sisters in faith, to refer to his father as the father of ignorance. So do not refer to him as Abu Jahl in the presence of his son Ikrimah. This is the graciousness of the Prophet This is his empathy. He was able to put himself into Ikrimah's shoes and understand how he would feel in that situation. One of the main conspirators against the Prophet ﷺ, the head of the Munafiqun, the hypocrites, in Medina, Abdullah bin Ubay bin Sulul. When his son comes to the Prophet ﷺ saying that my father has died, and I know that he was completely opposed to you, and he said terrible, reprehensible things about you, but he was my dad and I worry about him. The Prophet ﷺ on the spot removes his shirt, takes off his own shirt, and he gives it to him and he says, wrap him in this, use this as his shroud and bury him in that. What would we do to have the shirt of the Prophet ﷺ? Can you imagine being buried in the clothing of the Prophet ﷺ? What an honor, what a blessing. And even though Allah made it clear, 
this would not forgive his sins and what he had done wrong. But the Prophet ﷺ at that time is thinking of the son and putting himself in the son's shoes. Imagine what he feels like losing his father. That's empathy. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, very touching story. His grandson Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the son of Ali and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was the younger of the two brothers, Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. May Allah be pleased with both of them. The younger one, he used to stutter. The younger one, he used to stutter. He had a very severe stutter to the point where he could not even complete a sentence. It would take him forever to finish a sentence. And what makes it even worse is as a child, this is very, very traumatic and very detrimental to the development of a child. What makes it even more difficult is the fact that the older brother, Hassan radiallahu anhu, was very, very eloquent and well-spoken and a very gifted public speaker. So think about the pressure that they put on the younger brother, stuttering so much. And so he used to stutter so much. And you know when kids start to get a little bit older, they're four or five years old, they start to develop a little bit of you know, courage and they like to talk. One time, one time the Prophet ﷺ is sitting with quite a few companions and his grandsons are sitting with him and the younger one who stutters, he starts to chime in and say something. Because they love their grandfather, they're used to talking to him, he starts to say something. And the Prophet ﷺ used to afford each and every person so much respect that when somebody would speak, he would become quiet. He would not just turn towards them with his face, he would turn towards them with his chest and he would look at them while they spoke. And so he starts to speak and the Prophet ﷺ stops and turns towards him. And so everybody there also starts to listen and the kid is stuttering so badly that it starts to become awkward. And some of the people naturally, not viciously, not maliciously, some of the people naturally, they start to kind of exchange some glances, almost feeling bad for the kid because he cannot even get through a single sentence. It starts to get really kind of like awkward. And the Prophet ﷺ never once interrupts him. He does not finish his sentence for him. But the companions, they say, they looked at the face of the Prophet ﷺ on how is he reacting. And they said he had a big old smile on his face. And he was looking at Hussein radiallahu ta'ala and smiling and listening to him quietly. He didn't care if it took five minutes for him to finish what he was saying, but he let him finish what he was saying. And when he was done finishing, when he was finished saying whatever he was saying, the Prophet ﷺ at that time turns to everybody else that is sitting there because everyone was so weirded and awkwarded out. He turns to everyone and he says, لَقَدْ وَرَثَهَا عَنْ عَمِّهِ مُوسَى He inherited this from his uncle Moses. Referring to Musa السلام, and the fact that he used to stutter. That don't feel bad for him, envy him that he shares a trait with one of the great prophets of God, Musa السلام. He turned that negative into a positive, putting himself in that child's shoes and realizing what he needed at that time. He needed love and support and acceptance for who he was, for wh wh however he was. And the last story about empathy that I'll share here is a very touching story. Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a companion of the Prophet ﷺ, he was an Ansari. He had gone out for one of the campaigns, the military expeditions. And when the, the Prophet ﷺ did not go on this particular journey, so when they would return back, he would go outside of Medina to welcome them back. And all the kids whose fathers had gone out, they would also go out there to welcome their fathers and their brothers and their uncles, etc. home. So they're out there and they're all waiting for people to come back. And as slowly everybody is coming back, and the Prophet ﷺ would wait and then he would come at the back of the army. He would be at the end watching over everybody, the shepherd. And the, the son of Bashir radiallahu ta'ala is standing there, climbed up on a rock looking for his dad. And he sees people keep on coming. He keeps asking, have you seen my dad? Have you seen my dad? And he doesn't see his father. Finally, when he sees the Prophet ﷺ riding in the back, he realizes that means my father did not return. And he starts to cry. This child starts to cry because he realizes my dad isn't coming back home. He died. And the Prophet ﷺ stops. He's riding his animal. He stops and he picks him up 
and he hugs him and he continues to hold him until he stops crying, he calms down. And then he says to him, he says, Ama tarda an akuna ana abak wa aisha ummak? Don't cry, don't worry. If you need a father, I will be your father from today and Aisha will be your mother from today. To embrace somebody else's child as your own. Empathy. And look how it beautifies a person's conduct and character. How it beautifies a person. This quality is central to the prophetic character. very interesting video and a big shout out to the person that suggested this how many of us are out there or watching this and we've actually cried because maybe something happened to some someone to a movie character so if we can cry for movies why can't we have the same empathy for people that were surrounded by many of our friends are going through stuff but we never relate because we're ignorant. But I'm not saying everyone doesn't relate. There is a few people out there that actually have empathy and sympathy. So this was a very, very touching um, video to watch. The examples given were just, they even make you wonder, you check yourself. Am I practicing this in my life? It's not like, it's not by force that you have to practice it. If you're human, you learn to relate with someone when, on an emotional level. Maybe they lost a loved one. You can relate to that. Maybe they, um, they gained riches and you're happy for that person or whatever the case is. Many examples can be given sad and happy examples. Let me know what you think about these four stories told in this um video make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video